the most important part of learning how to tell stories is to listen to other people, to hear what they have to say and to gather information so that you can build the most effective stories possible. Deborah Mandelblatt Shapiro, yes, from the Mandelblatt Fortune of East Los Angeles, uh, is going to talk about her experience as a witness and her role in a narrative involving a bank robbery, her experience as a victim of crime, and as a character in a real-life drama, offers, I think, important lessons for lawyers as well as writers. Uh, she's my mother, and, um, well, she frightens me. Jonathan wants me to tell you all about my experience at Bank of America in Woodland Hills, where I worked for 21 years, two days a week, as a bank teller. During the time that you were a bank teller, yes. uh, how many times were you robbed? Four times in the 21 years. And Bank of America back then was so humane that what would they do for the teller who was uh, held up? Nothing. <laughs> Thanks for asking. In fact, after the robberies, and two in particular were very traumatic for everyone in the branch and the customers since it was a takeover, once the FBI had left, we got to go right back to our teller's window, open up again, and end the day. Nice. It was a well, people's institution. When Giannini was the president, it was. Now, uh, you were an excellent bank teller, as I recall. Yes. Were you ever short or wrong in your uh, end-of-day bounce? Actually, no. I was a good bank teller. Now, tell us about the last time you were robbed. The last time I was robbed, the fourth time, was by the same group that held us up the third time. I didn't know that. Yes. So we look up. And there's a man with a gun held over the partition that you could just see from like the head up. And he didn't have to say anything and he didn't say anything. He just was there with the gun. And the other teller and I, we looked up and she buzzed him in. And then he had another man in the lobby who yelled at the customers, and the other employees to get down. I was watching him and I thought, I think he's got makeup on and an afro. He had an aquiline nose and his hands had gloves. So all I could see was the afro, kind of a beret, him in profile, and the gloves while he was taking the money out. And I was just literally standing there watching him, at which point he saw me. And he pointed the gun at me and said, get down on the ground, I don't want you looking at me, mm. which I did. And the other girl did the same. The most disconcerting thing was she started whimpering, mm. um, and that concerned me. Did you slap her? No. I just wished she would stop whimpering. Amazing. Did you want to slap her? <laughs> Amazingly, and you'll know this, I was extremely calm and not at all nervous. I really felt like I was part of something going on, but not concerned about it. Mm. Then when the two of them had gathered up all their loot, they ran out the door. First the police came. The FBI didn't come until a little later, mm. but the police were there first until the FBI came. Mm. and. When descriptions were given, I was the only one who said that I was pretty sure he wasn't black because standing as close to him as I was, I could see he had makeup on, his features were not Negroid, and when I say it that way, it's because in 1953, when I was at L.A. City College, one of my first courses was anthropology. And I was used as an example by the professor as someone who was of Semitic background. <laughs> I was keenly aware, because of the course I had taken, right. more than anything, I think, of why I thought the way I thought. And 
you know, when I was I was a child at this point, I thought you were just being uh, liberal and didn't want to blame a black person. And I could see where you would have thought that. But when the FBI came and they were talking to us, I told them what I thought. Not half an hour later, an FBI agent comes into the bank. They had spotted two men on the freeway, because our bank was one block from the Ventura Freeway. And he asked the other teller and I to get in their car, go up on the freeway where they had spotted a car with two young men in it, and they asked, we were in the back of the car, if they were the two men. They weren't though. They happened to be two Marines from Camp Pendleton who were on their way on a fishing trip. Hmm. And, but it wasn't them. But. Were they black? One was white and one was black. Tell us about the fourth time. So the fourth time, the same people came back. Robbed the same bank, same people. Right. And the reason they came to us so often, because if you're on the freeway, you actually see the big Bank of America sign, and there's easy access on and off. Did you ever doubt whether or not you were right about the man being black? No. Even though other witnesses said he was black. Right. But I was the closest to him because I was standing as close to him as you and I are. But when they ultimately caught these people, they were in the process of robbing another bank in the South Bay area. They were looking for them. They had done at least a dozen robberies. And were they black? Not the ringleader. The ringleader was white. So you were right. I, of course I was right. You've heard that before. <laughs> of course.